Hey, let's learn about logging in Unreal Engine. Logging is a useful tool for debugging certain types of problems or just recording state transitions. For anything that's like high frequency, like movement, perhaps you may want to debug something and don't want to step through it with breakpoints the whole time. So you could add logging into that and change the verbosity so it's only enabled when you want it to be to debug it and get state transitions and that kind of things. And so here is the documentation URL for logging in Unreal. But effectively, logging happens behind this UV log macro. And there's a couple of different variants of that, but this is the most classical style logging what you'll see most prevalent in the engine. And the first thing you do is you give it a log category. So we'll give it a new one, we'll say log new tutorial category. The second thing you do is you say what verbosity do you want it to show up under. So I'll say just always show up under log. And then we need a message. And so we'll say my custom message. So this would attempt to use a new log category, and we can filter under this category, but right now this category doesn't exist. So we need to make that category, and we do that by going to some file somewhere. It could be any file, but I like to make a header file and a CVP file. And there are numerous of these macros. The one I like is this declare log category extern, which kind of mirrors a C++ extern variable pattern. So we want to define our new log. I'll paste that macro. And we'll go to where we define this new one. I want to copy that name, paste it. And the next thing we do is define what category should it default to. So if I say log, this means it'll print to the logs by default for the log category. Say verbose, it means if stuff's verbose, it'll be that by default. And so I'll start it off as log. And this last one is the compile time, trolls where it compiles to. And I'm just going to say all logs. And we'll get into what all of those mean in a moment. But go to definition, you can see all the different types of logs. And if we go to the macro, you can read a bit about the default verbosity and the compile time verbosity. But by default, I usually do log and all. Now, this isn't everything you need. This is like declaring a variable that's extern, so things can include this header file and use the log category wherever. But we still need to define the variable in some CPP file, like a standard C++ variable. And so I'm going to copy and paste this one from this one. It's just define log category. So copy, paste, define log category, and then we'll give it the same name. And since we're just basically defining the variable, that's all we have to do. Where we declare it is where we provide these default verbosity and compile time verbosity. And just for clarity, if that isn't clear, what I mean by extern is in C++, you can have extern int 32 my extern variable, but this is kind of like declaring the variable. So you need to find a CPP file to actually define it. And we'll just define it over here. And we can initialize it here. So if we hop back to our log tester, we should be able to use this log category now. And we'll no longer get a compile error because of the category not existing. Let's use that variable. So in logging, you can log variables, percent %i for integers or percent %d. And we'll do my extern variable. Now go to the definition of that, and I'll do maybe 11, just an arbitrary number. And then we'll say extern bar equals that. And now we'll debug this. All right, so we'll just pi, and it's going to do our logging test. Now we can step over that log line, and it should have been logged. And there's a couple places you can see the log. Sometimes the IDE has tools to help you see logs, like Writer here, as it, where you can filter categories and whatnot. In Visual Studio, you have your logging being done in the output window. And there's also a newer feature that has an Unreal Engine log for you that lets you categories and verbosity. But to keep it simple, I'm going to use the output log. So we can see in the output log down here under debug section that it says my custom message extern bar equals 11. You can also find the log file in your project directory under saved logs. And then you can open up this log here with your project name. Mine is UVCPP tutorials but it does seem like the file needs a frame or so to actually be written to. One interesting thing about the logging is there's this section here that is kind of like the frame number, but it wraps around over time. So you can use this to kind of get an idea of is all of this happening on the same frame or not. And there's also a timestamp at the prefix of the log. Anyways, let's take a look at some other log features. So here we have a standard log. You can log the current function. Technically, this is a C++ variable. I don't know if it's actually standard, but you can log it under the percent %hs. Normally, strings use percent %s, but since this is ASCII, I believe you need to use the percent %hs. Anyways, we'll see more about formatting in a moment, but 
step over that and it goes to log here, test and logging. And the name of the function is two discrete tests. And we see do discrete test right there. There is another macro called a C log or UE log, and that's for conditional logging. So this is conditional in addition to the log verbosity. Basically, I have a pool here that's false, and the first argument to this macro is what's the condition? So because it's false, it's actually not going to log this first log. So we'll step over that, and nothing popped up down here in our log. But if I set the value to true and I step over it, this condition was true, and we are on the log level by default for this one. So it actually ends up logging it down here, conditional logging a second time. We never got the first time, but we got the second time. So next we'll look at some formatting. We have a float, an integer, a tcar array, a actual f string, and a void pointer. And you can see that we do a log text, and then inside of this, we use the percent %hs for the function name again. For the float, we can do percent %2f, pass in the float. For the int, we can do percent %i, or also percent %d. Pass in the int there, and here's the alternative percent %d, passing in that int. tcar, we just pass in the tcar directly with a percent %s, so that's thing you might not expect is that percent %s is kind of like a raw string. So if you have an f string like this right here, what you need to do is actually dereference the f string, which gets you the tcar array, if I remember correctly. And so we can use the percent %s, but we need to put that little asterisk there to get that operator overload for f string. Pointers, you can use percent %p. And for names, you can do a fancy thing called get name safe and pass an object. This will return a name if the object is valid or a string signaling that it wasn't valid. And since this returns an F string, you want to dereference it so we can use the percent %s specifier. And if I step over that, you can see here that the formatted string is printed here. We've got 533 three, tcar string, a pointer address value, and a name. Some types like vectors have functions called toString or toCompactString. So you can log a vector with percent %s. And we can see the difference here in the display of the vector or the compact display. There's also a newer form of logging called logFMT for log format. And for this one, you specify the log category, the log verbosity, but you actually don't need to wrap this in a text macro like you do for the regular log. And you're able to use this fancy markup with these squiggly brackets. So I have an a int and a float, and it is able to just print those out, three and five. And the name isn't important here. This says an int, but we're passing a int just for clarity. But what you can do is a named format. So here we have the name my index, and we pass in the int. And then we have the name my float, and we pass in a float for that. If I step over that, you can see that it printed. And so to test verbosity, I've got some verbosities down here. And the UECPP tutorials is by default on log, as you can see. And so if I step over error, we get error. If I step over warning, we get warning. If I step over display, we get display. If I step over log, we get log. If I step over verbose, we didn't get anything because we're not set to verbose. And if I step over very verbose, we also don't get anything because we're not set to very verbose. And I have the CVAR to enable fatal logging. Currently it is off, so we don't hit the fatal log, but we can turn that on and see what happens in a moment. Anyways, for this log compiled out categories, if we take a look at how that's defined, the default is log and it has compiled out verbose. So we should get all the way up to log. We go all the way up to log and we can tweak this in a moment to see what happens if we try and make it very verbose. But here we can test one that has very verbose by default by stepping down. And you can see we printed all the categories, including very verbose. And that was just because it had default to very verbose. Now, these two are set via command line. So both of these are on very verbose, set via command. This is actually testing setting a log category from the command line. If we look at my command line, you can see here I have hyphen log commands equals log set via command v1 to verbose. There is a space between those. And then comma, log set via command v2, and I set that one to very verbose. Now both of these are logged on very verbose, so I shouldn't log the first one, but I should log the second one. And you can see we only logged the second one. You can see, if I were to search for this, that during initialization, it said it was raised to verbose. And this v2 one was raised to very verbose, and that was again because of my command line. There was also a log set via ini. And if I search for that one, in my default engine ini, under core.log, I have set log set via ini to very verbose, which is why in the 
output here, the debug output, you can see that it was raised to very verbose. And that means we should see this log here, very verbose from ii file. And if we go to the end, you can see that very verbose from ini file did in fact log. And I suppose it's worth mentioning that there is a print to screen thing that you can do, which is different than logging. And this is used pretty heavily in Blueprint. It's a uKismet system library print string. And you can do similar formatting with this f string printf, and then the text, and then the arguments behind it. But then you need to say whether it goes to the string, whether it's logged, and what the color will be, and how long it'll display for. Now, if I look at my file, you can see that the logs are actually in the file now. So it is updating in nearly real time. So you can have your log files piped to some other application if you're doing filtering externally. Now, what I would like to do is actually test this fatal logging. So I'm going to copy this and enable that CVAR. And then I'll run the discrete test again. I have a command to run this discrete test. And I'm just going to continue. And we hit this break. You can see the call stack is inside of the logging function. And so as soon as we hit this log fatal, we hit this UE debug break and prompt for remote. And so if I continue, hit another break and serialize, and it crashes. So that's what log fatal will do. So perhaps that is something you'd want to use if you had a fatal issue and needed to shut down, but also give a message. If I open the file and look at the end, we can see here that there was a log fatal in log tester CVP line 207. So that should tell you what you need to do to investigate why you had a crash. Now, if I reboot the editor, the previous log gets renamed with a timestamp and a new log is generated. One other thing I'd like to show you is that you can change the log verbosity via the terminal or cheats. So you don't need to use the command line or INI file. So if I paste this, which is just log, the log category, and then the verbosity you want, it should change it. I believe you don't actually need it to be capitalized with the log category name or the verbosity. So if we hop over to our Visual Studio and go to output log, you can see that the category was raised to very verbose. And then if I run the discrete test again, when we get down to the section where we print all the way up to very verbose, we should now get all of these logged down here. So we got the very verbose. There was also this test here where we had a compiled out log and the compiled out log only compiles up to verbose. So let's change that category and see what happens. So I'm going to put it at very verbose, and then we'll run the test again. And I'll continue here. And this has compiled out up to verbose. So if I could go all the way down, we attempted to log on very verbose and verbose. And if we look down here, the log compiled out category only logged up to verbose. And so putting verbose here means it'll compile up to that and that log category. But anything beyond that does not get compiled. So we completely lose our very verbose. So this is a way that you could quickly switch off logging, but keep it in place if you needed to disable that from a compile time standpoint. One thing to note is if you don't have a log category and are writing something super temporary, you can use the log temp category, though probably don't want to do that because it's easy to accidentally forget and leave that enabled. Do also be sure to check out the official documentation for logging in Unreal. There's probably some other small things here that I did not cover. I also explored the performance overhead of logging here in a tick function. I've captured some of these in a insights capture. One concern you might have is, is this adding overhead? If you look at the macro, it seems to me, if we go to the definition of this log category, there are a couple of definitions. I think this is the right one to go to. UV log, and it has UV private log. Go to that. There is a lot going on here, but it does seem like that maybe it is gated behind a check with a injected if statement before actually doing the logging checking if the log category is suppressed, but I could have misread this. So I've profiled it to find out if maybe there is a performance impact of logging. So what about logging performance? Some disclaimers before we get into the numbers. These were really quick profile captures, and the numbers may be different on your machine, especially in shipping builds. We are in the realm of very small numbers, so you should probably profile your own projects just to make sure it's consistent with what you see here. And note that having a Visual Studio debugger attached does have a performance impact. Here we can see with no debugger attached, this log in the editor was 76 microseconds, but with it attached in the editor, it was 157 microseconds. That gets faster if you're not in the editor, but I did want to call out that I realized this after I'd done my initial captures. So all of my editor tests have an attached debugger, but the development tests do not. So the first thing to look at is a baseline performance capture. Here's the editor and here's the development. So this one had the debugger attached. Basically, I have a tick function here with a scope marker that I'm using to time things. 
And then below this, not on this slide, but currently there are a bunch of tests that can be controlled via CVARs. So in the baseline, basically all the tests are off and I'm getting about an 800 nanosecond performance cost on this scope marker. And in the development build with all the tests off, I'm getting about 500 nanosecond cost. And as a reminder, you have seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, and then nanoseconds. So this is very tiny. Basically, there's not much cost here. The next test is to have a log category disabled. So there is a log happening here, right here. This test is enabled and we have it under the very verbose log and it just prints out the string here. But the default declaration for the log has it at log. So that means this will not print by default. And we can see in the editor here that with the log disabled, very verbose disabled, so it's at log level. So it's still logging things, just not this thing. With very verbose disabled, the editor has a cost of about 8.2 microseconds. And this has the debugger attached, so it's not super valid, but the development build did not. And if we look at that, it has about 400 nanoseconds. Now, if we look back at the baseline, the development build had about 500 nanoseconds. And then when we disabled it, it actually went down to 400 nanoseconds. So I think this is just sample noise with it being such small numbers, nanoseconds. And similar thing for the editor, 1.5 microseconds, whereas it had 800 nanoseconds, which is almost about a microsecond. So I believe this is just noise. The point of this slide is that if you disable a log, it's still very fast. So what happens if we do log? So this is a simple log test. It's only log and string new formatting under very verbose. And I've ran this command here, which bumps this log category to very verbose. And if we see here in the editor test, when it was logging, actually went up to about 154 microseconds, median about 160 microseconds. Again, this is with a debugger attached, so not super great. But the development build, which was not the editor of a standalone game, no debugger attached, had the cost at about 12 microseconds. And here's where you can see where it's logging. So the median was about 10 microseconds. So if we look back to where it was disabled, we went from about 400 nanoseconds to about 10 microseconds. So this is a significant cost to actually log. However, this is still very fast, and we'll get a little bit more into that in a moment. But what happens if we add an argument to the log? So in this one, running to a log, and we are having a format specifier where we provide a float value into the log line. It's just this float value here. Well, on the editor test, it had an average of about 160. And on this particular one, I was looking at 180 microseconds. So debugger attached again. Don't want to read too much into that. But the development build had about a 20 microsecond cost to do this log, and the median was 20 microseconds. So there was some increase in cost here. However, it's so small that I'm unsure if it was just a sample error. I think there's probably something with this percent float. There seems to be more time here before it actually gets to the log. So there seems to be maybe a slight impact of having format specifiers in your log lines. So what are the performance implications? And disclaimer, this is heavy approximation math, but let's say we had a target frame rate of 60 frames per second or 60 hertz. and that leaves about 16 milliseconds per frame, a little bit more. You can take one second divided by 60 to find the exact number. Let's just pick an arbitrary goal. Let's say 1% of our 16 milliseconds. That's 16,000 microseconds times 1% gives us 160 microseconds. If a simple log line without any arguments is about 10 microseconds, and this is an approximation, maybe more, maybe less, then we can take that 160 microseconds divided by 10 microseconds, and that gives us about 16 logs per frame to stay in 1% of the 16 milliseconds. So we can do up to 16 logs per frame. So it is a significant cost, but perhaps a cost you can afford. But normally I don't think you have you know, 16 logs every frame. In general, you probably don't have any logs for a frame if you can help it. And that's because you really don't want to flip your log files and have giant log files. But if you did have significant logging to try and debug problems and whatnot, hiding it behind the verbose flag can help you substantially. As we saw in the development build, when we had very verbose disabled, there was very minimal performance impact. It just skipped over the logs as if nothing. So you can have pretty frequent logging. Just make sure it's correctly behind a verbose flag or a very verbose flag, depending on your needs, and that you default your logs to the appropriate values so you're not spamming your logs every frame. But I hope that helped you understand logging and be able to use logging to debug your own projects and just collect state about how an application is running, those kind of things. It's common to use a separate tool to analyze logs. So if you have a cool log analyzing tool, or have some sort of plugin for Visual Studio or some other method of analyzing log files, whether that even be in another discipline like web dev or something. I'd be interested to hear what you use. Leave that in the comment below if you don't mind. So I hope that helps and until next time.